Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Jelanić. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are joining uh, in on this conversation today, we're going to be talking all about how to connect with your lover through grief. If you are experiencing grief of any kind and you'd like some insight or some advice, feel free to call in. You can come over to inspiredchoicesnetwork.com and join via Zoom. You can join the chat as well. And via the chat, you can ask questions uh, about this because whether you've experienced a loss, whether it was a loss of a family member or a friend or a lover or a pet, even like loss of a job, even there can be grief for that. But whether whatever your loss happened to be and your grief happens to be about, it often has a major impact on the way you feel about intimacy and how do you connect with somebody when you feel lost and you're going through grief sometimes it can be difficult so I'll be giving you guys some tips on how to do that and how to be gentle with yourself I, for me when it comes to intimacy one of the key things to be really clear on is that intimacy starts with knowing you so once you become familiar with what you're what you require, whether that's space or whether it's conversation, when you know what you require and you can develop communication skills that will be able to share that information, then you're on the track to being able to have greater intimacy. So knowing knowing what you require is really key, right? So if you've lost somebody, and I know that, um, you know, there's been a lot of losses out there. Um, I personally know two people who have died in the last uh, month. One was an aunt of mine and one was a dear friend of the family who was really helpful uh, when my daughter was little, um, really helpful in helping out, babysitting and doing all kinds of things, was an amazing contribution to the community as a teacher. And so um, you know, grief can happen in different ways and it'll affect sometimes how you feel. And it'll sometimes even affect like your own, not just not just like your intimacy with your partner where you might feel disconnected, but it might also even affect things like if you're um, self-pleasuring, sometimes it can affect that too, like feelings of, you know, people showing up. I know that sounds really abstract, but those thoughts can sometimes come into mind and definitely the loss of a person can be traumatic and depending on how how you respond to trauma or how much you've dealt with trauma in your life or different tools you've used to like get trauma out of your body out of your mind out of your being if you don't have any of those tools, you can be stuck in this grief for a really long time and have disconnection to people for a really long time. And if you've had trauma and you know how to deal with things, then you'll be able to have a better, um, or more ease, we should say, more ease with finding a way to connect again. We'll talk a little bit about why and how that happens through, um, through tr how trauma and can do that, you know, and the loss of somebody can be traumatic. And then the grief that follows that, the deep feelings that come in for that, where they kind of sit on that spectrum of our of our polyvagal response, how that in turn affects our nervous system, how that in turn affects different things in our body, like our endocrine system and the function also of our digestive system and our circulatory system, it goes on. 
our body, believe it or not, is not like separate, right? So if, if one thing is feels like it's under attack or under grief, which can feel like an attack kind of in a way, uh, is it's a stressor, the whole body, it's affected. And it's a ripple effect that affects it. So looking at these things, being able to get some tools under your belt to be able to move things out, to be able to have a new perspective can be really helpful in healing. Now, connecting to your lover through grief, I specifically chose to connect to your lover through this because oftentimes it's the lover who gets, you know, the brunt end of the deal. They get pushed aside and brushed aside because, you know, we brush our lovers aside thinking, well, we kind of take them for granted, right? So we'll just brush them aside. They'll be there in the morning. They'll be whatever. That's fine. Just brush them aside. And these are the people who, you know, you chose to have an intimate relationship, these lovers of yours. And these are not the times to brush people aside. These are the times to connect and find ways to do that. So one of the, some of the questions that I put out here that we're going to explore tonight are how grief changes how we connect to others. And we're going to look at some simple steps we can take to ensure connection. We're also going to look at what the value of connecting with your lover through grief is. And then we'll look at some key things to remember for yourself through the grieving process. For those of you who are just joining now, this is The Pleasure Zone, and I am Milica Yelenich. I work with people uh, through my holistic health practice. I also do a lot of things with sex and intimacy coaching, relationship coaching, and I really like to combine all of that because I find that our relationships affect our health, our health affects our relationships. It is a cycle that seems to occur. And one of the things that I particularly love doing is bringing people out of trauma and into pleasure. And this is another one of those shows that talks about how do we get out of trauma experiences and into pleasure? How do we connect with our lover through grief? And so if you've experienced grief, if you're experiencing grief, or if you know somebody who is currently grieving and is struggling in relationship with their lover, or even with somebody else, because I can also generalize this, but I'd really like this to be uh, for you to be able to feel like a sense of connection and trust with your lover again. We're going to look at all of that. So let's address the first question here, how grief changes how we connect to others. So I'm going to just talk about first like some, some grief experiences I've seen with couples before. So in my one of my very first years when I moved up to this area and I started uh, apprenticing with my mom for the work that I currently do, I remember we had a client who um, their daughter was about seven or eight years old and um, the daughter had cystic fibrosis and she was in a bad state. She lived pretty much in hospitals all the time. Um, at the time, we didn't have a lot of the same resources that we have now, unfortunately. And the mom had a lot of resources as well and was like always looking for resources, worked both hol holistically and with uh, allopathic medicine. So she used regular doctors and she used every expert in the world she could find and she was trying to find any and every solution for her daughter now what ended up happening was the daughter did end up getting sick um, which another sickness on top of the cystic fibrosis that uh, led to her death um, I believe she was just just turned eight when she died and uh, my child was a baby and one of the things that um, when we went to the funeral of this child that I noticed right off the bat was the immediate um, connection that the parents were having, they were having it publicly. And I thought, well, that's interesting because what I knew from them in their private life is they were struggling quite a lot um, privately. And publicly, they, they needed people to know and feel, I believe, and I could be wrong about this, I believe they needed people to feel like the family was strong and they were going to get through it. And this was more for other people to feel confident. And I remember watching them and thinking, I don't know. And I remember saying to the mom saying, 
I don't even know how I don't even know how you live after after you experience something that you experience. I don't know how I would live as I'm holding this like nine month old in my hands. I couldn't I couldn't even begin to imagine the grief that that mother was feeling. And she had other children as well. It affected the entire family when that child died. It affected the way that they connected to each other, to the other children. Um, they ended up divorced. The children ended up having a lot of um, issues emotionally, psychologically. Mental health issues were really high. Um, so that grief created a massive disconnect in the family. It created a massive disconnect with other people as well. They stopped talking to people. Uh, for a long time, um, they just, you know, there's, there's sort of the grief gets so big that you, you don't even know what to say. And, and I think for a lot of people, they don't even want to hear people go, I'm so sorry for your loss. There's just only so many stories they can hear. And there's only so many tears that they can hear from other people when they're experiencing their own. So how do you connect with your lover through that kind of level of grief? The first thing to do is check in with you and see if you are actually available. And how do you know if you're available? Is you can you can see if you're mentally available. You might not be mentally available. There might be like no space in your brain to have a conversation. So fair, maybe conversation is off the table. Are you um, are you available for some other like love languages like touch? Are you available for touch? If you are, then I would start super simple. I wouldn't jump into the sack, which happens a lot with people going through grief. They want to feel a deep sense of connection after a deep sense of loss. That's really common. And when you want to feel a deep sense of connection after a deep sense of loss, oftentimes people will just get it on. And sometimes people will have sex with random strangers when they're going through deep grief. So I highly don't recommend that because it's not going to resolve the issue of grief. What I do recommend though, is finding somebody that you do feel close to that you trust and either just start with a hand on the leg or a hand on their hand and feeling a sense of connection to them. And, and also feeling a sense of connection to everything so that they when you're touching them also have a sense of connection to everything so that you know that loss can feel a little different you know it's not that the loss is diminished or that it's not significant because the person still matters to you and the fact that they died still matters to you but the way that you perceive it might be with a little glimmer of hope with a little glimmer of feeling at peace. So how do you connect with your lover through grief, especially the grief of a child, like the loss of a child in the family? That's a really, really big one. Loss of a parent can be incredibly big too. If the parent was somebody that, you know, you enjoyed their company and they were, you know, a significant part of your life. Connecting to your lover through grief on those occasions can really be one of those things where you need to look at well, what are some love languages that I can bring out here to be able to connect. And I do love Gary Chapman, and I do refer to his work a lot. So if you haven't read The Five Languages of Love, go grab it. It is amazing. It's really, if you've read it once, read it five more times. There's always more in it that you're going to find. There's a lot of value in that book. So you know, if you can't, if it's not touch that your lover wants to connect through, it could just be some quality time. And if quality time means that you're just sitting and doing a puzzle together, great. If you happen to be going for a walk together, great. Um, finding those love languages that you can, that you can feel are effortless because through grief, you don't really want to have to put in a lot of work. When your body has been under stress and duress through trauma, you don't really want to put in a lot of effort necessarily you just want to relax and receive and both of you will be really good at relaxing and receiving if it's a love language that's easy for you and it's natural to you so that quality time possibly walks together 
possibly you're just sitting, having, you know, sitting there at breakfast, having a coffee together and just talking, you know, that can really work too. Um, words of affirmation can be helpful too. Like, I love you and I'm here for you. Whatever you need, whatever is required, you let me know I'm here for you. So then we also have, um, you know, gifts don't necessarily, well, maybe they do. So gifts are really low on my, my love language list, but gifts can be something that might help too. Bringing flowers can be, you know, if somebody likes that and you can always bring them something to help cheer up their day. Uh, and then there's always that one uh, love language that I seem to always forget. So we got touch, your touch, words of affirmation. Uh, we've got uh, the quality time, we've got gifts, and we've got that one that I'm forgetting. I'll get to it, I'm sure. <laughs> so whatever that one is, it must be pretty low on my list. Um, so I'll, I'm sure I'll figure that out. But figure out what they are and play with them and in order to start to connect with your lover. We're going to head to our first commercial break and stay tuned so we'll come back and we're going to answer some of those other questions that I have put out there for you for exploration on how to connect with your lover through grief we will be right back after this commercial are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives what if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are listening, we're talking today about how to connect with your lover through grief. And so if you're experiencing grief and you're having difficulty connecting with your lover, this is the show's for you. And just before the break, we were talking about using some of the five languages of love in order to be able to connect with your lover. And there was one that I left out, which there's always one that at the time, probably in my life, it's like low on my list. But um, so this one, um, here are the five, as as uh, we were discussing before break, words of affirmation, which are like compliments, quality time could be anything from like taking walks together, having conversations. It's generally not like watching a TV show together, unless that TV show is something that you're relating to uh, each other, having conversations about it. Uh, that is that is kind of more like in an insular time that's more your own kind of escape uh, so receiving gifts is another one so gifts can be anything from somebody you know bringing you a candy bar home to buying you a you know a house you know vacations whatever 
It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be small. It can be really anything. Acts of service are when you do something for your lover or when you just do something in general, right? So acts of service are that, but in terms of today, in reference to what can you do to connect with your lover, an act of service could be anything from taking out the garbage, doing the dishes, building them a um, an office like my husband did for me. So acts of service can also be doing things like cleaning the house as an act of service or baking them their favorite cake. So, you know, lots of different ways that you can do acts of service. Uh, some people also do acts of service together in relationship where they go out and they volunteer in the community. Um, you can do acts of service together as well, like things like gardening or um, whatever it happens to be where you're doing something that is bettering uh, your life, making your life easier and better. That's how I interpret it. So physical touch isn't always sex. It can be something as simple as touching hands, kissing, um, even just snuggling up can be physical touch. So sometimes when people see the physical touch one, the automatic uh, image that comes to mind is, is a sexual contact, uh, like physical penetration, and it doesn't have to be that. So physical touch, um, that is one of the like dialects of physical touch, but it's not the language itself, but it is within the dialects, sex is within that. Uh, cuddling is in that too, and lots of different variations. So how do we connect with our lover through grief is one of the, the ways to begin to do that is to look at those five languages of love and see what is what is easeful right now and what is something that comes naturally so you don't have to stress yourself out you're already under stress and duress with grief so you want to do things that come to you naturally and easily and that your partner likes to receive naturally and easily so if you're undergoing the grief then asking your partner to deliver the love languages to you would be a great thing to do. And it's okay to ask. Your partner is not psychic, even if they are. It's okay to ask them for what you need. And you don't have to assume, they shouldn't just know. Like I hear people say that a lot is like, you should just know what to say or how to be. Well, they don't, you know, we're, you know, even when you're aware or psychic, um, it's always better to tell your partner what it is you require and for them to follow through on that. It's also very confirming and affirming that there's permission being given when the person actually asks for it. So like if physical touch, having a spanking is like something that would be affirming and confirming of love and connection, then asking for that. Can you just like spank my bum right now? It helps me feel calm and relaxed and believe it or not it can actually be really calming and relaxing if you've never experienced it. it doesn't have to be hard whacking but it can can definitely help the body calm down if you've ever had a small child in your life a baby of any kind um and they were like colicky rubbing their bum will often help them calm down so or rubbing their feet it's it's just like a how our bodies respond to touch so how do we, how does grief change how we connect to others? I started off with that question and, and one of the stories I was telling you about was the family who lost their child and that, it, you know, it led to uh, a breakdown of the entire family. And how does it also change is that sometimes we try and put on brave faces around others. It's like, no, I'm fine. I'm really fine. Um, and then you become insular and you start to push people away or you don't you know you don't want to um, have have anybody near you because the connection you know any thought of having any more loss is too great so if you become close to anybody else it's like devastating to think about that so it's easier to just push people away and not get too close Another thing that people sometimes do through grief is they be, they might do the opposite and become overly needy, um, where they're becoming highly dependent on others as well, um, because they're you know desperate for the connection. So it just depends on how they're responding to the grief. So in the case of the grief where you know people are becoming more pulled away, what happens is when you look at how bodies respond in the polyvagal response is that 
we start off calm and then this trauma thing kicks in and then our bodies. So our um, parasympathetic nervous system is calm and then, you know, the shock hits and then we go into fight or flight and our sympathetic nervous system kicks in, gets things moving high and uh, gets our adrenals going and gets everything like in a rush mode. Sometimes hard to sleep in that mode. And then it gets even more stressed after a long duration of time or being exposed to this and not dealing with it It leads to things like depression or even suicidal thoughts. And it can lead to a lot of uh, pulling away socially. So up in that polyvagal response to extreme stress, um, you know, you, you can be somebody who just likes your own private time, or you could be in this, this, um, this response, your parasympathetic is on overdrive, and your body is going into uh, depression and needs to be able to bring it back down. So doing some, sometimes with that, doing some things that that appear stressful, like exercise, can actually bring it down to that next level, where now you're in, you, now you're in a sympathetic response, like your fight or flight, you're running, that's flight, right? And then you want to bring it down again through meditation. So having some times of meditation can be amazing to be able to connect with yourself, with whatever you want to call God, whether it's whether you call God, God, or the divine feminine, divine masculine, the universe, whatever your term is, that you're feeling a connection to something bigger than yourself. And then even doing this in places of, whether it's places of prayer, like mosques or synagogues or churches or temples, any of those um, through with community can bring that that stress response down. So being in environments with community that you trust and connect with helps your body get calm and brings that parasympathetic response down to a calm and relaxed state. That calm and relaxed state helps your body function. And in that calm and relaxed state, you'll have a more natural inclination to connect with others. So if you're having a hard time connecting with your partner, sometimes doing things in social environments, to bring your parasympathetic to calm will help you be able to connect with your partner as well. So these responses that we have in our body are so, they're so natural. They're, they're put in place for us for survival. So grief after trauma is put in place for us for survival. It brings us into that parasympathetic overdrive where if we stay in that grief for a really long time, it leads to depression, but it tells us, it's a signal to tell us, okay, we need to get active, we need to get moving, we need to get to calm. So all of these things can be great information and signals to, our, to tell us what's going on and how we're responding to different circumstances um, that either have happened in the past, are happening, or are about to happen. Sometimes people grieve, the loss of somebody before they've even passed on because they're watching the person uh, go through the dying process that can sometimes be harder than having um, somebody die really quickly out of the blue sometimes can be harder some sometimes not it just depends on who you are so one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about as well today are what some simple steps that you can take to ensure connection. And I kind of mentioned a little bit about going into um, public environments where you feel connected to, well, I think public environments is, is one part of it because it's about community. Um, being in a community where you feel supported and loved and that you feel uh, that you also feel a sense of connection to the divine while you're in it. So some people will join meditation groups or they might do um, prayer groups. They might do grief groups. Finding somewhere that you can connect to a whole lot of people so that your lover is not your only source of companionship is really important as well. That's a really can be a really big burden on a person. And if you had the loss of a lover, 
and you're wanting to connect, having grief groups is amazing so that you can feel a sense of connection to others. Although sometimes the grief goes deep and great. I had um, a friend who she was 72 and she passed and her grief for her loss of her husband and her mother was so deep and so great that all she ever wanted to do was be with them and die. So that was hard. Um, sometimes it's hard to be with people knowing that what they really want to do is, is not be in their body. And then all you can do is be there to support them through it. So um, with her, for example, the way I connected with her was through touch because she didn't have a lot of it. Um, so she would come and I would hug her and I would hold her hand and we would talk and I would let her talk about all of her grief. And then I would remind her to ask to feel the energies of her husband and her mother who had passed on. And then she would have a moment of peace. And then as I'm talking, I can sense her. So it's kind of fun. Um, and yeah, so just knowing that we, we have ways that we can connect with people, even when they're not in body anymore. And that doesn't mean that they're a ghost or something. I mean, you, there is that experience as well for those of you who are aware of it and can connect with that. But there's also the experience of knowing and remembering what their energy feels like. And sometimes people are like, oh, they're with me. And they could be. And it also could be the sense that you are remembering their energy. So you're connecting with that person as well. And sometimes remembering to connect with them and have the memories of that person that are like happy memories when you can remember when they were smiling can really be healing for you. And also from what I've been told by many uh, teachers in the psychic community that it also heals their soul. So as they're on the other side, it can heal them as well. So we are going to go to our next commercial break. You are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. 
Well, welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. So the questions we've been addressing today around how to connect with your lover through grief are the questions of how grief can change how we connect to others. Like, do does something change in our connection? And for the most part, it does. Um, whether it's subtle or whether it's grand, it can actually create a lot of shift and change in your connections and the way you connect with others. Uh, whether that's that you pull back completely and don't want to connect. Uh, another another reference I can give you on that is that in um, in my family, a few generations back, so my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather, their second child, his name was Jack, and when he was two years old, he um, took medicine that was heart medication. He took like an entire vial of heart medication. So you got to remember this was like 1916 1917 probably wasn't labeled very well it was probably in a glass bottle sitting on a counter and nobody really thought about it uh, and he swallowed the whole thing and died instantly and my family after that my grandmother my great-grandmother um she always found a way to deal with her grief she would always grieve every year on the day of his death uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon she would celebrate the birth of her other son uh, whose birthday was the same day as the day that her her um, her first son Jack had died so it was like in July sometime and my great-grandfather he had his own way of dealing which was disconnecting from people and pulling back he didn't get angry he just got really withdrawn and so all the children after that had a very different experience of him than the ones that came before. So he was, there was always like talk that he was like very like loving and hands-on kind of dad. And then all of a sudden the loss of Jack um, created a whole different experience for all the children who followed. There were I think four or five after that that lived. And that grief, um, that grief did something uh, for them as well. I mean, they were very young when they lost Jack. I think my grandmother was maybe 20 when she lost Jack. Um, she was 17 or 18 when she had her first child, and then uh, I think 20 when she had Jack. So she was fairly young. And it's not that they had resources or anything like that on how to deal with it. So my grandfather was an ophthalmologist. And he dove deeply into his work, and my grandmother dove deeply into volunteering. And so they both had a lot of things that would occupy them from having to be around a lot or having reminders of, of what was going on. I don't know if they actually know this or had ever looked at it from that, but from that perspective. But when I look back at their stories and their lives, this is um, my interpretation of their life. <laughs> And they might have had a different experience, but when I did talk to my great grandmother about it once, she did say that um, that it was just like she just was like, yeah, it was very hard to to lose him. And this was like ninety, you know, eighty, ninety years after his. It was probably no, it was maybe seventy years after his death. She did live to one hundred and six, so it could have very well been like eighty years <laughs> after his death. But um, I don't think it was. I think that was more like 70 years after his death. So grief changes family dynamics. It changes relationships. It changes the way people relate to their lovers, especially if it's a close family, especially if it's the loss of a child or the loss of, um, you know, so, someone that, you know, has been living with you, whether it's like a parent or whatever. It's people that you're really, really close to for sure are going to have an effect on how you relate with your lover. So how do you ensure that you have a connection? And then we talked a little bit about the five love languages and looking at them and seeing what are some of the ones you can deliver with ease and that come naturally to you so that you can bring them into your relationship and share those with your lover. And one of the questions also on ensuring connection is that you can, you know, you can plan this you can set time aside like every Sunday afternoon this is what we're going to do every Friday night this is what creating date nights to ensure that and putting it in your calendar for any of you who do work where you have to have things scheduled 
or you have to have, uh, you know, if you go to appointments ever, whether it's a doctor's appointment or a dentist's appointment, if those are scheduled, do you show up? And if you do, then you create a schedule that you're going to connect with your lover because if you can honor the dentist. I certainly hope you could honor your lover and show up for your meetings. So have your meetings, create times where you can spend time to connect and use those five love languages, whichever ones suit you best. And make sure that you make this a very, um, it's like, this is like priority, right? So sometimes we forget that we, the priority can be with the living. Sometimes the grief can be so deep that the dead are consuming all of your thoughts and feelings and emotions. And yes, you miss them. And yes, they're, you know, they were important to you. All of these things are true. And just sense their energy, just like close your eyes, feel where they are, what they remind you of, what their smile looked like. And if you don't remember, because it's been so long, bring out a picture of them. And if you don't have that, then just get a sense of maybe you remember what they smell like or look like or felt like when you hug them and just bring that energy into your body and absorb that so that you can feel a sense of connection there too. So when you can connect and not feel so deep, deeply grieving the loss of somebody who's passed on, then you can connect with the living, the ones who are still here who would love to connect. One of the things that we all want to do is belong, and the way to belong is to feel connection to others. So we need that. We need to be able to connect to our lovers and to feel um, loved, right? So what is the value of connecting with your lover through grief? So what's the value of actually investing your time and energy into somebody who's grieving what a you know why would I invest my time they're all sad and grumpy and they're like Debbie Downers they're not Debbie Downers they're grieving and whether that's the grief of um you know a family member or a friend or a dog or a cat or a lover or whatever it happens to be even if it's just a job in their or a career and they're grieving that there's still some grief there it might not be as deep or um could be though might not be the same as the grief of a person but for some people it might be so being present with your lover through that what do you think let's just think about what's the value of that how much would it feel great for somebody to be able to want to be with you even when you're sad how fun is it to have a lover who would want to be with you through all your ugly times, you know, all the times where you're crying, where your snot's running down your face, where you got mascara dripping down. That's for that's for all genders that are wearing mascara. For um, everybody and anybody who's, you know, just like in like a big sobbing, angry mess. Because grief has sadness, and it also sometimes has this undercurrent of anger and. I, you know, we talk about the five stages of grief as well. And, you know, there can be anger and denial and all of these things incorporated in grief. And to be able to be present with somebody through all of their experience and through all of those energies is such a gift to them and such a gift to you because it demands you to be present. And you being present means that you're showing up in your life so that you can be there for other people. You know, you're showing up in your life for you primarily. And then the result is that you can show up for other people. That's a bonus. And if you're like me and a little ADHD, it takes a lot of practice or, you know, might be on the autism spectrum. I'm not sure. I'm not diagnosed, but I know that there are times where I have to diligently say, like, be present, feel my body, touch my body. I'm here. Ah, I'm here. I am. Oh, I am. I am here. Ooh. You know, and just getting like familiar with the fact that I'm here because that also that tendency for fight or flight, that ADHD thing can sometimes kick in when you are in fight or flight and you're in a trauma response mode and you're like, Whoop, I'm out of here. Um, so being coming back, being present, like what's triggering that response, what's going on and coming back to that. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. 
you're here. Hi, how are you? And one way to be present with your lover is to really just be like, hi, how are you? And then take a minute to hear how they are. And if you don't want to know how they are, don't ask. Because if you're just asking out of like um, tradition or like habit and they go to answer you and you're not there, it's just like, why'd you bother, right? So if you are going to ask somebody how they are, and you're like, and you do, and you do want to hear, you can always say, I really want to know how you are. I have like five minutes right now. So is that something that you can share with me in five minutes? Or should we set some time aside later so that I can be present with you and I can listen to what you have to say? I know it doesn't sound like the way that normal people talk to each other, but wouldn't it be cool if it actually was a respectful way that we asked and spoke with each other and let each other know where we're at and how we're feeling and like what's going on. So connecting through grief can be tricky, but can be super valuable in that we can heal through it. And sometimes when you are connecting physically, sexually through grief, it can help your body calm down and it can bring in some happy hormones. And we'll get into that conversation um, after the break. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. So for those of you who have been listening to this whole show, you'll realize that our show has, tonight has been all about how to connect with your lover through grief. And talking about that in particular, because I know a lot of people who are experiencing a lot of grief these days. And I'm noticing how that's affecting their relationships. And I'm also noticing how, um, and I'm noticing just like uh, how people respond to each other in general through grief. Sometimes there's anger that comes up or resentments and they don't know why. And it can look unkind because there's a lot of projecting that happens, but the right way to grieve and the wrong way to grieve. And I know that in um, in my dad's, faith my dad is serbian orthodox there there are certain um there are certain rules shall we say there are certain um suggestions that are put out around you know wearing certain colors like you wear black for grief i, I wore black uh purposefully because we're in the grief show <laughs> no i didn't um i work because this shirt is comfy and uh there are certain other beliefs like you shouldn't celebrate, you shouldn't dance, especially if a child dies, you know, you don't dance for like a year or something. There's all kinds of these rules and regulations which do not help people get through the trauma or the grieving process necessarily. Definitely cry and definitely do other things too. Get some of that stuff out of your body, 100%. And switch up the energy, bring in some other things, like bring in some joyful music that gets you going. You know, I was at another uh, funeral. Oh, actually, there's been quite a few deaths. Yes, more than um, I was at a, a celebration of life that was really lovely, too. And during that um, celebration of life, there was fabulous food, fabulous music, and people got up and danced and celebrated. Um, this person's life. He was a was actually a Juno Award winner 
So he's a musician. Uh, Canada has Juno Awards for musicians, and he was a Juno Award winner. And his old band from the '90s came out and played at his funeral and or at his memorial or celebration of life. And his wife got up and danced. And I think she was a fine example to me that she was still connecting to his energy through grief, and that people were connecting to her through grief, and that we can do this. We can do this in a different way. And remembering to celebrate the living as well, to be there with the living, to remember them, to support them um, can be amazing. So I mentioned briefly, like healing, healing also through grief is an amazing thing to do. Healing through sex, through grief can be fantastic as long as you're with a partner that you trust and love and are intimate with having sex with strangers can actually add to more grief because you'll feel more lost, like the walking away or the need to disconnect and it can become addictive because you're creating a habit out of a trauma. Um, so if you are with your partner, if you've been with your partner and you trust your partner, love your partner and have intimacy and have a level of intimacy with your partner, uh, healing your grief through sex can be really lovely and can help you feel uh, a sense of connection, as well as bringing in those happy hormones, the dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, the dose of happy hormones, D-O-S-E. So those are our happy hormones, which are, again, right, we're going to have our uh, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins that come in with sex and intimacy. Uh, we do have a great show coming for you next week. I'm going to have a guest on who is also a host on Inspired Choices Network. She has a show where she also talks about uh, a lot of things with sex and intimacy. So it's Ceres Rivas Verdejo is going to be on next week. And we're going to geek out about pleasure and intimacy books because we both love reading sex, uh, sex books, pleasure books, intimacy books. And we're going to be sharing with you our favorites and also sharing with you why there are our favorites and what are some of the, the things that you'll learn, some of the things you can glean out of those books. So let's go right back to the very, um, the very last question that, that I said I would um, address and the key things to remember. I think I kind of addressed this. The key thing I think we need to remember is the living. Who's still got a body and who can we connect to in their bodies? And those who have passed on, uh, if you believe that you can connect with them, you can. If you don't believe that you can connect with them, you can. And if you think I'm insane, that's okay. So whether you feel it or not, uh, the thing is, there is always a way to connect with them, whether it's connecting to their memory or connecting to their energetic bodies. It's up to you how you choose that. So that might actually shift and change your perspective on death and shift and change the way that you. Uh, relate to people too and that you can still connect with them after they've moved out of their body moved because their bodies are basically vessels that we live in right so they're just finding a new place to live which is not in this body so and also the one other thing a few things key things to remember is that the the um five languages of love apply at all times so we can bring them in to assist with this Communication is key to ask for what you would like. Don't be shy. Yes, you're grieving. And be like, you know what? I'm grieving right now. I could really use a hug. I'm grieving right now. I could really use a walk. I'm grieving right now. I could really use A, B, C, and D. Um, so not do not assume that your partner knows what you need. Even if they've a million times before figured out what you need, today might be different and you might need to ask for what you need. And how empowering it is is it for you to be able to ask for what you need, even in times of grief? And if you can learn to ask for things that you desire, even during times of grief, think about how much easier it's going to be during times of joy or happiness or ease. And also knowing that you don't have to be grieving to ask for what you would like, too. That's also pretty important. So remember next week, stay tuned in and turned on and come in for next week's show of Geeking Out, Pleasure and Intimacy. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 
6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.